So I'm uh, Ed Copeland. I'm in the physics department here at uh, Nottingham. And my area of research is cosmology, in particular the early universe. So what am I doing with a pot from Santa Fe? I went to Imperial College to do a postdoc. And there I met a few people, Tom Kibble, Mark Heinmarsh, Neil Turok, Andy Albrecht was also visiting and I got to learn about these objects called cosmic strings. These are mind-blowing objects that could have been formed in the very early universe. I went on a trip to Santa Fe to work with Mark on a project uh, with cosmic strings and one Saturday we just went down to the market in Santa Fe we were just walking through and we came across this American Indian stall and they were, they were selling these fantastic pots that are so smooth. This is 1986, I hope I, my skin looks as smooth as this in <laughs> 30 odd years. During the week we worked calculating away, trying to understand the properties of cosmic strings, trying to see if we could understand how they chop themselves up and to form these loops that at the time were regarded as essential to understand that galaxies. You'd associate a cluster of galaxies with a big loop and so it was very important to understand the distribution of these loops because you needed to understand how they matched with the distribution of the galaxies. And so we worked on that, but we never managed to solve it. <laughs> and so that's another key thing about doing research. Not everything comes out with a, a really positive answer because it was just too complicated. We worked very hard to try and solve the equations and write them down to understand how this network would evolve. But it led to other breakthroughs, you know, other directions that we, that we took. It's an as aspect of the job which I never thought about when I entered it, that actually you would not only have a chance to do research into you know, exciting topics that uh, lots of people might be interested in, but also that you'd make friendships and those friendships would last. They're not just friendships from school, they're friendships from your work and they, they last for so many years and you get to meet people every few months or every couple of years at conferences and it's just like getting back together with old friends again. It's been so lucky in that, that way that I've been able to do that and then carry on working, you know, working on a subject that we love. One of the goals of, of theoretical physics is to unify the forces of nature and uh, Faraday and Maxwell were able to do this with electricity and magnetism and we call that electromagnetism and then we introduced the weak in interactions, that's called the electroweak interactions, then we introduce the strong interactions through what are known as grand unified theories, but that leaves, as far as we know, one force remaining, which is gravity, has yet to be reconciled into this overall picture of unification. And I think that is where there'll be huge uh, interest over the next, de next few decades to try and get to, the, get to the heart of understanding the unification of the forces of nature. Thinking about what's the proudest moment I've had as a scientist, I think there's two different things I'd like to bring in. One is through research, and that is realizing that these cosmic superstrings could have existed and that there was a way to bring together cosmic strings and superstrings. But more recently, I've got very much into sort of doing outreach type things, and, and I've been, I find it very rewarding the feedback you, I get, either through this, the videos on 60 Symbols or going out to give talks, of people who are clearly enjoying hearing about science from scientists and they seem to enjoy the way I've been doing it. And that, actually, I feel quite proud about that I get, uh, it's at a different level, it's not at the level of the research, but it's at the level of explaining and that, that gives me a warm glow. I'm a drop in the ocean. <laughs> I'm, uh, I, that's how I feel. Over the last year we've been hearing about the Higgs mechanism and uh, I work with Tom Kibble a lot and Tom, Tom's also one of the pioneers of the Higgs mechanism and, and also came up with the idea of cosmic, super, uh, cosmic strings and phase transitions in the early universe leading to these objects that could form and these are really amazing breakthroughs and I, I have to admit I haven't made those sort of pioneering breakthroughs. I've been I've done some nice work based on that kind of thing, but I haven't made the sort of the underlying pioneering breakthrough. That would be really nice, and uh, maybe one day. Never say never. If I had to um, give a message to uh, someone in a in a few hundred years' time or a hundred years' time, let's, I don't know how long this will survive. Um, then, well, first of all, I, it would be enjoy your work. Okay, enjoy the excitement of trying to learn about the universe and the early universe in particular. 
be patient um, and try and be as thorough as you can in doing the calculations because I'm talking to a theorist now, I'm not talking to an experimentalist, I'm talking to a theorist. Try and be as careful, methodical and as accurate as you can be in making predictions of things that uh, hopefully observers will be able to go and, and find because the, the, the more careful you are then the more accurate your prediction will be and uh, it'll be an easier way of testing your model to see whether or not it fits with observations. It's beautiful. I think it's probably the most beautiful object that will go in here and it's got happy memories. So, there we go. Oh. <laughs> God, that really rings. That's a great idea. I think it's lovely. And, uh, well, when they look in the future, and I don't know how many objects are going to go in there by the end, but uh, I'm sure the American Indian Pueblo bars there will take pride of place, though. I'm sure of that. <laughs>